How's it going, everybody? My name is Sai. I look a little high, and we're gonna listen to Hail the Sun's new album, New Age Felt. I'm moderately aware of Hail the Sun. Um, I've listened to a couple of their tracks, some of them on my stream from different albums, and primarily from the uh, whatever album has Black Serotonin on it. I've heard like the first three or four songs off of that record. Never really got all the way through it. We're going to see what's up. I've been kind of enjoying their unique blend of like swan core slash math core uh, music and uh, hopefully we get some more of that here. So without further ado, let's check it out. So right off the bat, his voice is a little bit more refined than I remember. I kind of like it. Hitting good with those technical guitar licks. A little bit of that funky stuff on. Let's go. I like that a lot. That little explosion for a moment. Very interesting mixing style so far. Very reverby. Even the really forward elements have a little layer of echo to it. Interesting building noise on the left here. I'm not sure what it is. And we got some nice uh, clean guitar work on the right. Interesting use of panning. Oh, the nice fucking crescendo there. The blast beats. Nice fucking clean transition too. In we go. What all can you? I kind of like the lyricism too. It's really nice. Very interesting to listen to. I like the grit in his voice here, man. He's got a very high sitting voice, but he can really pull out the intensity and make it kind of elevate beyond just his pitch, which is nice. Kind of wish a few other artists in the genre would do that when they're capable of it. I'm not throwing shade, you're throwing shade. That's a fucking cool lick with the mmm, that pop off and everything. We just jump straight into the next tracks on this one. I like it. Some immediacy to it. Oh man! Definitely more on the melodic side for most of this, but I feel like it's working out a lot because they're tampering down the math core craziness with some more. The more. Some, the more simplistic passages that kind of help dilute it a little bit and make it a little bit easier to ingest, you know what I mean? Interesting tempo changes in this chorus. It starts off much slower, speeds up a little bit, but never quite gets to where the choruses or the verses are going. It's really, it's really cool writing. Very out of the box. Oh, those drums still carrying out those drums through the more melodic sections. Creates a nice dynamic. Is the song actually over there? Because it's a nice spot to end it, but I feel like there's like more time on here. Like a transition. 
Yes. So now we have more of a like a rudimentary transition where it's like slowed down into a little bit of a different rhythm as we lead in. And I like these sounds. I really like these fucking tweaked, distant, echoey noises. And... Well, that's clean as fuck, too. Clean as fuck with that nice bass lit li- 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 line. Shit. Can't even talk today. That lick is fucking delicious. That took a turn? Okay. It's amazing how they can take so many different angles and still carve out such a distinct identity for each song. Like, I always admire when bands can pull that off, because a lot of bands go fucking crazy and it's just like a mess. But here it's really meshing very well. When it breaks into these spots, man, it's so fucking clean. Just, mmm, mmm, so clean. So good. Mmm, that lick so good. Mm. Fuck me, we are off to an amazing start. This is very good so far. This is very, very good so far. Ah, it's such a good chorus too. Just all the different elements here just working in such perfect, well-oiled tandem. I love the way these choruses drop out. Like, it's, the chorus drops out to a little lick, hits back in. Unique. It really creates a sound that I feel like I haven't heard before, and it's really cool. So that was a really lovely little tone to kind of soften things up a little. And now, again, really, really great guitar effects. That's one thing that's standing out is they're not really using electronic elements much, but they are using a lot of guitar effects that are like analog guitar effects. They sound analog. They're just creating a really nice, clean fucking sound. Every fucking verse feels so intense and important, too. A lot of core bands use a lot of whimsy in their tracks. These are just really intense and powerful kind of sound. And they can convey that without being totally heavy, too. Like, there's barely any screaming. There's a little bit of grit on his voice, but it's a very high-pitched voice. Very clean instruments all around. It's just basically the drums and the lyricism and songwriting to really carry the intensity level. And it's doing a great job. Strange fucking effects with the kind of grinding guitar strings on the left and right. Well, that's irony right there. See, I want to get out a little thought here, but it's like kind of tough to keep up with the song, actually. It's almost cinematic in nature. It goes from movement so cleanly and emotionally. It's irony that I talk about the heaviness on the track that's gonna turn out to have some of the heaviest sections on the album so far. I swear to god these are not scripted. hard turn that up oh man Ooh, those guitars are fucking perfect with those drums this fucking groove on okay it's crazy 
This whole song has been very high range, but oh, it's got some fucking balls right here, dude. Oh man. See that was just that was mixed so differently. That was such a different song while simultaneously fitting so well with the sound of the rest of the record that it's like That was a really interesting soundscape. They really dialed up the heaviness and intensity up to 11 after I made a comment about it. I'm here for it, honestly. Like, it's cliche to say that I'm liking the heavier parts more, but I think they just really capitalizing on the great intensity and dynamics that are already present. It's great. That is very interestingly mixed. I'm just surrounding with chaos. Really great fucking runs here too. Come on, man. Killing it. Killing it. Two songs left. Wow, that's actually sad. I'm actually sad. I'm very sad. I had to step well, that's pretty. Please. Oh, that's a nice run. Hmm. And he drops that octave. That was really nice. <laughs> oh my god. That was a very simple song, just like a almost an intermission like passage, but damn. The way they changed it up, even in the two minutes, they just kinda carried a nice build of pressure and then an explosion, and now we're on the last song. Come on, man. And it's gotten to the point where I genuinely don't know what's coming next. And that's awesome. Some nice harmonic fucking picks with the delay on there. Fuck. Fucking pop off, okay. Shit, man, it feels so good. This is perfect fucking climatic energy, dude. It is so epic in its own way. <laughs> Let's talk about it. That might be one of the albums of the year. That's, that's, that's definitely up there. That is definitely, out of all the albums I've heard this year, definitely up near the top of the stack. That is fucking... That was really fucking good. And I'm gonna tell you why that was really fucking good. And you're gonna listen, and you're gonna accept my opinion as fact, because that is how I present myself. No, just kidding. Obviously, it's a subjective and all that good shit. But... That was dynamic in every way that I feel like the weaker albums of this year could not be. And that is important because I, I will I will bitch a lot about getting bored with an album. I will say, eh, it's too long. Eh, it's it's you know it's not mixing it up a whole lot. Eh, you know I I am a person that craves a bit of diversity in a record. Um, I'm a person that craves a little bit of structure too. There's 
great sense of structure here. I'm gonna break it down for you really quick so that you don't think I'm insane. We had a nice kind of soft intro and domino. It started to build up a little bit of tension throughout Slander and uh, this up, uh, yeah, that one. We're gonna get, we got, had a little bit of flex of heaviness, but overall it was just kind of focusing on building intensity and making their overall sound known. And then when Slip My Mind came in, they kind of teased us with a little bit of real, real heaviness, real thick, dense, chunky heaviness that dialed up to 11 with Parasitic Cleanse and even carried out for a pretty good amount in Hysteriantics. Oh, there it started to wind down. Devaluation brought us to a big crescendo for a little bit of a more emotional punch with Punch Drunk. Now, why did I just break down every song like a really shitty reviewer on Sputnik? That's because it's important. Because every single song on this is important to the album. There is nothing skippable here. And that is fucking huge. There is no filler here. It all contributes to the emotion of the record. And that is key. That is so key because so many records nowadays have, you know, toss away tracks or they go for that hour mark and they add in passages that just repeat over and over again. And it's just like, eh, it just, it kind of rots on you a little bit. This is a nice crisp 30 minutes and change, I believe, well, 34 minutes, 34 minutes. Doesn't overstay its welcome, doesn't feel like you've been cheated out of anything because it packed so much into those 30 minutes. And that is how you structure a fucking album well without like necessarily being like a prog epic or something like that, you know what I mean? Like just a quick in, did a lot of great stuff with it, still held a great structure, had a beginning, middle, and end, it sounded cohesive, boom. Boom. Now for the like individual traits, I like the vocalist a lot. I usually kind of get iffy with kind of high pitched uh, post-hardcore vocalist, because I feel like they're pretty common, they're a little dime a dozen, but in his case, he added a lot of elements that were really fucking cool. I liked his little sense of intensity, his little baby grit that he had going on there that could carry into some real intensity as, you know, the songs got a little bit more amped up. Um, I liked how he has a really great full... Uh, control over how he dips in between octaves like when he drops it sounds really good you're gonna hear a few comparisons to this band down hither area dance gavin dance because it's 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 natural it's a swan core slash math core band you're gonna get some fucking comparisons i'm pretty sure there's some crossover between the members if not totally directly um so the first of that is he kind of his range works in ways that Tilly and Pearson's both works, and I kind of wish that I did it more often. Um, my favorite DGD album is Mothership, and the reason why is because Tilly and harnesses an intensity in that. Even though he has a very high-pitched voice, he gets a lot of grit to it, and doesn't like completely throw it around like he has his softer moments, but when it gets really intense, he's practically screaming, and it sounds fucking cool. Um, he doesn't do that a whole lot on their other records, and I feel like this guy harnesses that same kind of idea, where he's singing high, but he's singing high with a little bit of ah to it, you know, he's got a little bit of tense, tense intensity to it, and it makes the music sound more intense and important as a result. It sounds not as frivolous, because a lot of swan core slash math core bands can sound fun and bouncy. This has less of the fun. It has occasional moments of like a fun, funky groove every now and then, but this is just more intense and important and powerful. And I kind of like that vibe. I think that vibe suits itself pretty shockingly well to this kind of music, and I'm shocked that more bands don't harness it. Um, another great example, if you're looking for bands that do, would be like Idola. Idola is, is, is very much no silliness, fucking swancore intensity. In, in some ways, I'd say almost sometimes better than most other bands in the genre. Um, so, that's really great. The drums, Fuego, on, pi on point, they carry a lot of the sound of the band because a lot of the guitars are doing kind of similar moods here or there for most of the album. So it's up to the drums and the overall songwriting to really change up the mood. And they do a great job of it, you know? When it's intense, this guy's flying off with fucking blast beats. When they're building pressure, he's hitting all the different toms like it's a fucking building war drum going off. He, he's, he's got a lot of great range in his play style and the overall sound that he brings to the album. So, A plus drummer. Bassist, I am. Bassist in these bands are always fucking crazy. So this guy's no, no, 
no uh, exception. Um, <laughs> talking hard, um, he's no exception. He brings a really nice sound to the album, a really nice underlayer. But I feel like there's moments in the album that really allow him to be flashy, and I like that because I like me some flashy bass playing. There's something, there's something just kind of satisfying to hear in a sexy fucking lick just roll in over silence. Um, and then the guitarist, of course. I saved for last because at the end of the day, this is the guitarist band. This is 100% the guitarist band. The sound is led by the guitars. It is ruled by the guitars. The guitars handle most of the experimentation in the record. Um, every diverse element is carried on the shoulders of the guitarist and the different effects that he employs. Um, because ultimately, there's a lot going on. Like there are a lot of different effects. Like he does so many different effects that you would not, you'd be forgiven for not thinking that was a guitar sometimes. Um, and it doesn't sound cluttered. That's like the biggest craziest thing is he is doing a shitload of different ideas and traits and genres being shoved into this little wallet, and somehow it just kind of makes sense. It just kind of fits, you know. It just kind of works. It just works. And. That is impressive. It is impressive when a band can pull that off. Now, I'm going to close this out with a couple of quick notes on just like the overall feeling. I Like I said, I liked how important it felt, especially Punch Drunk for me was just like the perfect closer because it was just, it felt emotional. It felt like it was carrying out a certain weight to it. Like I wouldn't say intensity, I've been overusing that word a little bit, but it's like a weight to it, an importance to it. Um, it's kind of epic closer, a very epic closer, especially considering it's using some of the same components that the rest of the album uses. It's just kind of tweaking them in a certain way to evoke a certain kind of mood. Uh, the lyrics were so well written that I probably have to go back and read it to fully understand the meaning of all of them. They had some very poetic runs in there, and I, I feel like by use of metaphor and other interesting kind of dialect twists, at some point, I just kind of had to give up on trying to dissect it all on the fly. I'll have to go back and read it later, because there's there some cool stuff in there. Um, so yeah, overall, fucking psyched about this album. This album was really fucking good. Like I said, I don't feel like there's any skippability, which is, is, is kind of easy to pull off with a 30-minute album, but you know what? It's a choice to make a 30-minute album, and it's a choice that a lot of bands don't fucking make. And overall, I think it was appropriate for this album. I think, like, they did not say they're welcome. I think they, there may have been a risk outstaying their welcome if they did this for an hour. So, great choice. There's great artistic choices all over this thing. I'm kind of psyched to go check out some more Play All the Sun. Though, I know from my experiences listening to the other music, it's not quite like this. This is a much more mature sound than the rest of the records. But, I still kind of want to listen to the rest of it. So, I'm going to do that at some point, And maybe you'll see some reviews pop up. But... In the meantime, if you like this album, which you probably should, because I just fucking squished about it for like an hour. Um, no, 30 minutes actually, Jesus Christ. Links down below. Buy all the merch. Buy all the record. I'm probably going to pick up the record myself. It'll probably appear on this wall at some point. Um, and yeah, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to join the community that I've been building, you can join us on Discord down below, or you can join us on my Twitch streams every Friday from 3 to 7. Uh, we do music listening parties where basically, you know, uh, viewers come in and bring in songs for me to listen to, and I actually can articulate myself really well. Um, I promise. And yeah, so you will actually see some of those reactions pop up on the channel here and there. Um, just kind of depends on how much other content I put on. If I put on a bunch of other content, I'm not going to stuff in highlights. Um, and yeah, that's actually where I heard, uh, where I got my attention drawn to this new album. Because one of my viewers, uh, named Vicious Oz, comes in. Uh, he brought in some Swan Core and he brought my attention to the new Hail the Sun album. And I said I was going to do it. And I said, I don't know, it's a little bit crowded. Because it is a little bit crowded. Like fucking 200 albums released yesterday. Or today, I guess, technically. Um, but, fuck it, I'm glad I chose this one, because this is definitely among the best in the bunch, for sure. And, yeah, that's been my rant, that's been my spiel, thank you guys so much for watching if you made it this far, and take care.